Hi students, in this video, we will be learning how to write a full balanced chemical equation with state symbols. So to illustrate the steps in which we would need to take in order to write a balanced chemical equation, I'm going to illustrate using example one on the screen, which is what I'm highlighting now, reacting hydrogen and oxygen to produce water. So let's start with a simple example first. Okay, uh, in general, once we receive a question, uh, of course, the first thing to do is always to dissect the question and to sieve out the important parts uh, that we should be uh, taking note of, right? So in trying to arrive at a chemical equation, uh, we should always uh, be able to represent uh, the reaction firstly using a word equation. Okay, so by reading the question, I'll be able to know that my reactants in this case uh, are hydrogen as well as oxygen. Okay, these two substances are reacting, right? So let's represent this, just write it at the side in words first. Okay, so the word equation will be hydrogen plus oxygen and then if I read back at the question uh, you notice that it says it is to produce water okay so just from the English part of it we know that water is the product in this case okay so um, when presented in an equation format we will make use of a forward arrow like so okay to represent the progress of reaction. So over here, I can see that it's from reactants to products. Reactants being hydrogen plus oxygen, reacting together to form water because the um, arrow pointing that way tells me the progress of the reaction is in that, uh, in that way. Okay. So then now let's look at step one officially. Okay, so once we have an idea of what is going on, uh, with the help of our work equation to frame our understanding, we then now need to write down the chemical formula of the reactants and products in order to get a chemical equation. Okay, so if we look at it one by one, the first one is hydrogen, right? So whenever you are trying to think about the chemical formula, you should always reference it to room temperature and pressure. So for instance, if we talk about hydrogen, if we just think about it, right, hydrogen is in the air and we know that air is a mixture, right, and it's in the gaseous state, okay. So hydrogen in this, in this case is a gas and we know that hydrogen is special because it exists as a diatomic molecule, okay. So we need to say the formula for hydrogen is H2. Similarly for oxygen, it is also uh, a gaseous substance. Uh, that is also existing, as ex existing, okay, uh, in the form of a diatomic molecule, so also O two. So and then after that, we represent it with an arrow to show the reaction has happened, and our product in this case is water H two O. Our next step is to check that the number of atoms of each element uh, are equal on both sides of the equation. In short, the Atoms, number of atoms, which is on the left hand side, in short we call it LHS, is equal to that on the right hand side, RHS. Okay, so let me guide you through this. So for instance, looking back at our same equation, right, uh, on the reactant side, you notice that at the moment there are two hydrogen atoms, right, H2. So it's made of two hydrogen atoms, and then I have two oxygen atoms as well. Okay, then if now we look at the right hand side of the equation on the product side, from H2O, we know that there are two hydrogen atoms, but only one oxygen atom. Okay, so for this particular equation, this reaction, you notice that up to step two, it doesn't fulfill this criteria that we want. Okay, so we need a balance on both sides. At the moment, you look at the number of hydrogen atoms, it's okay, it's fine. But for the oxygen atoms, there's an imbalance, right? Two versus one. So to balance, we need to look at step 3a, right? 
we need to put a coefficient 2 in front of our water, H2O. Okay, so that would then mean that two molecules of water are formed. Okay, as indicated by um, the part that I've just highlighted. Okay, so in doing so, if we just look at the working at the side, right, by putting this coefficient 2, I'm multiplying uh, all the atoms that are in water, H2O, by 2. Okay, so if we look at uh, the oxygen atoms, if I multiply by 2, now I'll have two oxygen atoms. Okay, and not to forget, this coefficient 2 will also multiply by 2 to my number of hydrogen atoms, such that now, I mean, if you look at it plainly, it does create a separate problem, right? So now our oxygen atoms is balanced already, right? Two oxygen versus two oxygen, left hand side, right hand side. But now on the hydrogen end, it becomes two hydrogen on the left hand side uh, versus four hydrogen atoms on the right hand side, right? But not to worry, naturally, let's continue doing the mathematics portion. We look at step 3b, okay? You notice that it's still not balanced, right? But you can simply add another coefficient 2 in front of our H2 hydrogen, okay? As highlighted now, right, on the screen. So now you will then notice, right, that the number of reactants on the left-hand side which is your hydrogen atom, right? Originally you had two. So now you put another coefficient two on, on this side, meaning you are multiplying the whole thing by two. Okay, and in doing so, this is how you get the final, if you do a final count, you have four hydrogen atoms on the left hand side, two oxygen atoms, and this equals to the uh, same case for the right hand side. Four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. Okay, so once you have done this manipulation, you see that, yes, I have achieved this uh, state that I want. Number of atoms on the left hand side equal to that on the right hand side. Then this uh, chemical equation is said to be fully balanced. So this will be your final answer. Of course, in the case where the question uh, requires you to include state symbols for your balanced chemical equation, then there is a final step, step four, which is to add the state symbols, all right? So this is on the next page already, okay? So for state symbols, uh, very straightforward. There's just four state symbols that you need to know. The first three is very familiar. If it's solid, we um, represent it with a letter S uh, enclosed in brackets. Liquid L, gas G. The only one that is uh, a bit more new, uh, newer to you, will be aqueous, okay? So, aqueous means that uh, your substance is able to dissolve in water and it is soluble. So, in this case where, let's say for instance, sodium chloride, sodium chloride can dissolve in water, right? So, um, if, let's say the question is tell me that uh, the substance has dissolved in water or they tell you that it's very soluble and you notice that in one of your reactants there's water present, then uh, you would know and be able to uh, derive that uh, the state symbol for that particular substance will be a cube. Okay, so uh, looking back at our uh, equation that we have just left off, right? So for hydrogen, we know that it's gas. That's why you see over here the state symbol is bracket G. Oxygen also bracket G, and then water, pure water at room temperature and pressure is a liquid. So therefore, it's L. Okay. Yep. Okay, now let's um, put all that we have talked about into practice by looking at the exercises. So if you look at exercise one, we have many questions here for you to try, uh, and you are required to balance the following chemical equation. So, uh, the answers are all here, fleshed out for you. Please check your answers. Uh, and of course, you should have attempted it before you have viewed this video as part of your blended learning. Um, but over here, I'm just going to go in detail uh, by working out with you uh, part A and part B. As for the rest, please check your answers. Uh, if you have gotten it wrong, please uh, work, them, work through them again. 
Uh, but if you're facing difficulties, please reach out to your individual chemistry teachers. Okay, so let's look at part A. So over here, the skeletal part of the equation is that we have these two reactants, calcium reacting with oxygen to give us calcium oxide, right? So uh, of course, plainly at this moment, it is not balanced. So we know that our final goal is to have the number of atoms on the left-hand side equals to the number of atoms on the right-hand side. Okay. So with that in mind, let's do the so-called mass and the working together. So at the moment on the left-hand side, the reactant side, we know that there is one calcium atom as well as two oxygen atoms in our diatomic molecule O2. On the right-hand side, calcium oxide, we have one calcium atom and mm -hmm. one oxygen atom. Okay, so one look, we can tell that the equation is not balanced yet. So what can we do now? Uh, the easiest way, of course, is to make sure that we can multiply this one oxygen atom to make it two by applying a coefficient two to our calcium oxide uh, product like that. Put a two, okay. Then in doing so, that would also uh, multiply a factor of 2 to our calcium atom as such. Okay, so again here we realize that it creates another problem, but as we have gone through just now, uh, our next step would be to continue to balance that out. Okay, so now I, just, I have two calcium atoms. So to tackle that on the left hand side, I will have to multiply my calcium by a factor of 2. Okay, so that coefficient goes up there in the equation. And then now, to just wrap it up and verify, right? Indeed, on the left-hand side, we have two calcium atoms equals to two, two oxygen atoms and equals to two also on the right-hand side. So that tells us that we have achieved the final balance chemical equation. Okay, so, yep, so that's how we do it. You see, it's exactly the same as the answer. Let's work through part B together as well. So part B, our reactants are zinc as well as hydrogen, uh, chloride. In this particular case, we are looking at hydrochloric acid. Lah. Okay, so after you have learned acids and bases, you will definitely know. Uh, and then our products are zinc chloride as well as hydrogen gas. Okay, um, so we do the same, right? On the left hand side, let's look at do a little tally of how many uh, atoms of each kind that we have. So we have one zinc, one hydrogen, one chlorine. Right hand side, we have one zinc, two chlorine and 200, okay? So, yeah, over here, you notice in my presentation or answers in, in my working, so to speak, uh, I try to match it uh, according to the type so that as I compare uh, left-hand side to right-hand side, I can have a very uh, clear view of it, okay? So again, one look, I can tell that, uh, okay, zinc is fine, but the other two is not, right? So for instance, if let's say I have uh, two chlorine on right hand side, one on the left, so then naturally I want to multiply this by two. Okay. And uh but not to forget, always look back up in your chemical equation. You notice that C L, this one comes from H C L. So if I multiply this by two, I put a coefficient next to here, I'm also multiplying this by two. Okay. So actually in part B it's very interesting. Once you do this, you are actually pretty much done. So you notice now, one zinc versus one zinc, two hydrogen versus two hydrogen, and then uh, two chlorine versus two chlorine. So it fits in very nicely, and you have achieved your balanced chemical equation. Okay, again, it tallies with the answer that I'm showing on your screen. Okay, so hopefully uh, by going through these two questions, uh, it helps you with exercise one. So please check your answers for the remaining questions. Now let's look at exercise two now. Why did I say now twice? Now let's look at exercise two. Okay, we are going to write balanced chemical equations for these three reactions. Okay, so slightly difficult than exercise one. Let's up the level. Okay, so uh, over here, you see in words, right? They represent the reaction in words. So uh, again, as a beginner, I highly suggest that you write out the word equation first so that it's uh, very clear for you to see which are the reactants, which are the products in one look. And after that, you write a chemical formula, okay? Uh, but of course, once you get a hang of it, 
that step becomes totally unnecessary because you can definitely stray away from the question itself, translate it to chemical formula as you get more and more familiar. Okay, so let me demonstrate that to you. Okay, so let's see out the information from the question. So we know that we have sodium metal. Okay, sodium we know is Na. Okay, reacts with chlorine gas, so plus Cl2, chlorine gas, that atomic molecule, to form. So that's where we put in our arrow to show that the reaction is going on to form our product, sodium chloride, NaCl. Okay, so at this moment, uh, well, actually exercise two, to be fair, they, in the question, they did not mention state symbols, right? So let's, but let's use this opportunity to still practice on that since uh, we have already talked about it, okay? Uh, and there's no harm also, right? So um, from the question, you notice that in exercise two, they are still being pretty kind. They tell you straight up that uh, sodium is a metal, okay? So from that, you know that it's a solid. Chlorine gas, that's very obvious, so that's G, and then solid sodium chloride, so that's state symbol S, right? Solid. Uh, by the case where they, where they don't give you too much detail, right, you should still know what the state symbols are. For instance, if they just say sodium, you will know that sodium is a metal, right, uh, because number one, sodium, we always talk about it. But number two, even if you're very confused, uh, or let's say suddenly you forget, you can always refer to the periodic table, and you notice that sodium is on the left-hand side of the periodic table, so it's definitely a metal, and metals are always solid. Okay, next, sorry. Eventually, you will learn the table on uh, the topic on the periodic table, and you know that chlorine is in group seven, right? So group seven are the halogens, and halogens are always uh, gaseous, right? At least for the first few, the top few, okay? Yeah. And finally, sodium chloride. This one we know that it's ionic compound from chemical bonding, and chemical, oh, sorry, ionic compounds at room temperature, they are always solid. Okay, so that's how you uh, um, arrive at state symbols depending on uh, how much information the question gives you. Even if they don't give you much, you can definitely still figure it out. Okay, yeah. So carrying on with the balancing portion, right? Again, at the back of the mind of our minds, we need to know that the left hand side must equal to right hand side. So at the moment, one look, I can tell that the imbalance comes at chlorine. I have two chlorine atoms on the left-hand side, but I only have one on the right-hand side, okay? So again, intuitively, the mass would come in in the part where I need to put a coefficient two on the right-hand side here. In doing so, I'm also messing up with the balance of a uh, number of sodium atoms. So again, to counter that, we just put a coefficient two on here as well, so that eventually everything balances out, okay? So that's part A. Then let's look at part B. We have uh, magnesium metal reacting with oxygen gas to form solid magnesium oxide. Okay, again, uh, always a good habit, right? Underline and highlight the important information. So over here, magnesium metal, so MgS plus oxygen gas O2, which is G, arrow to form solid magnesium oxide. So MgO bracket S. Okay, so then now we look at the balancing. At the moment, there are two oxygen atoms on the left-hand side, but only got one on the right-hand side, right? So to do that, we put a coefficient 2 over here. And in doing so, we will also need to put a 2 on the right left-hand side for magnesium. Okay, so then now with this, we have the full balanced chemical equation. Part C, okay, potassium metal, solid, reacts with water, which is in the liquid state, L to produce, draw the arrow, aqueous potassium hydroxide, KOH, bracket AQ, plus hydrogen gas, H2, bracket G. Okay, so in part C, this is uh, just a little demonstration to show you, right, if you get very good at chemical equations, of course the prerequisite is for you to be very strong at your chemical formula, right, uh, which of course if you need more practicing, please refer to the previous video. Okay, but I promise you, if you do uh, sufficient practice, and again, if you're very strong at your chemical formula, ultimately, when you do chemical equations, the balancing is going to be very fast. Okay? Yep. So, of course, our last step here is to check for the balancing of left-hand side equals to right-hand side. 
at the moment, uh, okay, over here I'm going to share a little tip with you. You notice that at the moment on the left hand side there are two hydrogen atoms, right hand side there are three, right? Uh, in general, we will try to make it an even number, okay? And more often than not, it always works, uh, okay? So uh, if let's say over here at potassium hydroxide, you notice there's only one hydrogen, right? So that's an odd number, and we don't like that. So let's try to make it even. And the easiest way to make it even is to put a coefficient 2, right? So it becomes 2H. Try to put a 2 there, okay? So coefficient 2. And then, yeah, in doing so, uh, we now have two potassium atoms on the right-hand side. So we put a 2 here as well to balance that out on the left-hand side. Okay, so number of potassium is done. Uh, so now let's look at number of oxygen, okay? So in order to balance the number of oxygen on the left-hand side, we need to put another 2 here, right? Okay, so that's done. Then now we're just left with checking of hydrogen, okay? So in doing so, left-hand side, now we have 2 times 2, which is 4 hydrogen atoms. And then now you look at the right-hand side. You notice that there's 2 from your 2 units of... Uh, potassium hydroxide, and then here also you have 2, right? So 2 plus 2 is also 4 hydrogen. Okay, so, yep, this is, you have arrived at the balanced chemical equation for part C. Okay, final four questions in exercise 3. So over here, you're required to write balanced chemical equations with state symbols for the following reactions. So exercise 3 um, is the full set of requirements. You need to have balanced chemical equation and state symbols. So in the case where questions are given like this, usually it, uh, you're awarded two marks. The first mark is given for balanced chemical equation, and the second mark goes to correct state symbols. Okay. So let's look at part A. You have solid copper 2 oxide, so that's CuO, S. Right, reacts with iron metal, so that's Fe solid, to produce, put in the arrow, uh, solid iron 3 oxide. Iron 3 oxide is Fe2O3, okay, solid, and copper metal, which is Cu solid. Okay, so over here, uh, in terms of the balancing, straight up you can see that the number of iron is different, so you want to put a question 2 there, uh, and then next thing you should notice should be the number of atoms of oxygen, right? One on the left-hand side versus three on the right-hand side. So instinctively, I would want to put a coefficient three, okay, over there. And then to finally balance with the copper, I put three on that side as well. So this is my full balanced chemical equation with state symbols. Part B, hydrogen gas H2 reacts with nitrogen gas N2 to produce ammonia gas NH3. So over here on the right hand side, I need to have two nitrogens, right? So I want to put a coefficient two there. In doing so, my right hand side now has three hydrogens. So that could be balanced on the left hand side by putting a coefficient three to my H2. Okay, uh, do a final check before you move on with life. You notice that, okay, the equation is balanced. Okay, so then we can move on. Part C, zinc metal, Zn, reacts with steam. Okay, steam is common knowledge. You have to know that steam, when they use the word steam, they're referring to H2O water in the gaseous state, right? It's just like when you boil water in the morning when you want to make coffee uh, or Milo, right? You are boiling water and then you notice there's steam uh, being produced. So that's hydrogen, uh, sorry, water in the gaseous state, okay? To produce uh, solid zinc oxide, ZNO, and hydrogen gas, H2. Uh, okay, so by now, you should really get a hang of balancing chemical equations already, right? So always look at what stands out to you immediately, okay? Uh, yeah, but that doesn't apply to this question because if you look at the left-hand side and the right-hand side, you know this, perfect, it is already balanced, right? So no need to itch your finger to go and touch it, just leave it as it is. This is already the final answer. Ah, okay. That was easy. Smiley face.
Then part D, last one, lithium metal solid reacts with uh, hydrochloric acid, right? Acids are always AQ, to produce aqueous lithium chloride, LICL, and hydrogen gas, H2. Okay, so over here, uh, there's an imbalance for hydrogen, so I want to put a coefficient 2 here in my acid, then that would need to balance with 2 here, and then 2 there. Okay, so up to here, if you are already doing balanced chemical equation uh, as fast as I am, or at least something close to that, uh, then the good news is that very good you are getting a hang of it. Um, but if if not, then uh, take this opportunity to, uh, you know, let yourself be a bit more encouraged, right? Uh, if you really put in the hard work uh, into... Uh, your chemical formula, as well as doing more practice on writing chemical equation, which you will have, right, in our subsequent chapters on acids and bases, uh, metals, and so on and so forth, uh, you will definitely get very good at this. Okay, so that's my promise to you. Okay, so, all right, I'll end off on this good note, and that's it for today's lesson. See you in the next one. Goodbye.